Thank you, Anders, and uh, thank you to the um, International Federation, uh, Benoit Machuel, uh, General Secretary, John Smith, President, and also to our American Federation, led by uh, Ray Hare, who's uh, here somewhere. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here. When I told some of my colleagues and some of our board members that I was coming to speak to a group of musicians and uh, union representatives, they looked at me like I was uh, a lamb going into the lion's den. And I know a lot of the musicians look at me like I'm the lion. But really, we're in this together. Uh, we have to work together to face what have become some difficult circumstances uh, facing uh, our industry. Dallas is uh, relatively typical of the uh, American symphonies in that we get only about 40% of our revenues from ticket sales. And I think that that's going to go down. We get about 10% from an endowment then about half from private donations, foundations, corporations, wealthy individuals. Very little from the state. Some American orchestras get more from their state or city. Uh, in Dallas, we get almost nothing. The last two years, we had a substantial deficit in Dallas, like a lot of uh, arts organizations in the United States. Our response to that was to uh, start a major campaign to raise money, about $50 million to be spent over the next five or six years. Uh, we hope at least $100 million to add to our endowment. We're using that to pay off our debt. We've raised about 22 of that 50 so far, uh, just in the first year. Uh, so we've got off to a good start. We're using that to pay off debt, avoid future deficits, and then to enhance our operations. Um, when uh, Jaap van Sweden arrived as our music director about uh, two and a half years ago, uh, we realized that, uh, that our, our orchestra could play as well as anyone. And I want to thank uh, the, uh, the Dutch people in the audience, by the way, of uh, giving the world the, the wonderful gift of Jaap van Sweden. Um, He's uh, opened up a lot of possibilities for us, and so we've had a, a desire in a long time in Dallas to uh, enter the ranks of the top orchestras in the world. YAP gives us the chance to do that uh, artistically, so we need to add the things that money can buy, which are things like regular touring, more recording. We'll add musicians to the orchestra. Uh, we'll increase compensation to be comparable to all of the top orchestras. So that's, our, that's the vision that we set. How did we convince people uh, to give us money for that? Well, as I said, first was a strategic plan. Set a vision. We created a six-year financial plan. Um, you have to be able to tell people what their money is going to be used for, what the vision is. Secondly, there was a lot of education involved. People don't realize uh, as much as they used to, it seems, uh, the, the impact of, of music. Uh, so we do a, a lot of, um, of talking and messaging, um, first on just the civic pride aspects, obviously, the impact on the economy. Uh, that do doesn't always win the day. There are other uh, deeper things that people uh, care about. One is education. And there is very good information now about the impact of music education on general education. The kids involved in music do better in the rest of their schooling. I think it's in part because of the combination of, of, of a very logical system, which is music that they're dealing with, added to the creative side. So using both sides of their brain, I think it has an impact. In addition to things like uh, uh, working together in a group, learning how to uh, have discipline, work hard. So that's a big part of our message is the impact on education. Secondly, music is a part of our culture who we are. There's some very good information now uh, um, developed in the neurosciences that uh, we are hardwired as human beings for music. We're not sure why exactly, but that seems to be part of who we are. The archaeologists in, in all of the, the uh, graves that they've dug up from the earliest time as they find alongside the tools and, and weapons, they find music instruments. So it's a part of who we are, and I think that's a message that a lot of people don't realize but it, it, but it resonates when you tell them. And then finally, music, the, the most important part of our economy these days is creativity. It's not um, 
making stuff as much anymore as, as thinking ideas. And music is a very important part of that, along with other cultural things. So it's another part of the message that uh, resonates with, uh, with our donors. And symphonic music, of course, is the base of our, of our uh, music. It creates a lot of the other parts of uh, So even if someone likes jazz or rock or something else, symphonic music is the base of, of, uh, of where it, uh, most of it starts. We did not change our programming in Dallas, was one of the questions I was asked. Uh, we, uh, with our aspirations, we want to be involved with new music, but we look at it now in more creative ways, perhaps. Uh, for example, we started a new series uh, with the composers of film music. We chose uh, five of the top film industry composers, had them create a new piece just for orchestra, and then played that in a, or, or, or playing, we just had the first one uh, a couple weeks ago. We'll play their new composition, and then alongside that, show movie clips with other uh, compositions that they've made for specific films. Another part, uh, another uh, creative thing that we're doing, like a lot of organizations, is bringing screens, uh, just like that film example, but there are others, bringing screens into the hall, and then we're going to be using the internet more. This generation uh, is used to multimedia, used to the internet, and I think that's going to be a part of our future. Now, I do have to admit that Dallas is not typical in many respects uh, of American cities in that it is still rapidly growing. We add about 150,000 people a year in Dallas. Uh, people don't realize it's the fourth largest metroplex in the United States now and it's expected to pass by Chicago and be the third after LA and New York within the next 10 years. So we have a good basis to go out and raise funds, uh, find new corporations that are coming to town. So it's a little bit easier for us, but I think the principles are same for all of us. I want to make one final comment if I can. Coming from the commercial world, it, it, uh, I've spent most of my life uh, running companies and, and uh, practicing law. It worries me a lot that our business model uh, is, is difficult. Uh, we can't sell what our product is and, and make a living. Uh, we have to go out and have it subsidized in some ways, and that makes us vulnerable. Vulnerable to political change, to a donor who dies and whose kids um, like the theater better than the symphony, uh, to a company whose uh, management changes or, or disappears. So we need to look for ways to protect ourselves against those, the downturns or the downsides by raising a rainy day fund or through other mechanisms. And I think avoiding, um, avoiding things that endanger our future. And that's going to require some flexibility. We're going to have to work together, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, think of new ways to do things to protect our futures. Thank you.